Hello guys. Okay, so I did not read yesterday and I didn't realize until it was too late. So I'll read two chapters for you guys today. And the first one is a little bit short, so I'm just going to put them both in this video. So last time we read Junie B, um, it was chapter three, being a grown up lady. So she was at dinner with mother and daddy and she was telling them that she is a grown up lady. Um, and mother said that maybe she was S-L-E-E-P-Y, which is sleepy. So they were getting her in the bath, getting her ready to go to bed. And she was playing with bubbles and stuff. So maybe not the most grown up lady. Um, chapter four today is called Flower Girls and Junie B. Jones is back at school. So we're gonna see if what happens, what's gonna change. We're gonna see if Junie B. Jones is still trying to be a grown up lady. Here we go. The next day at recess, I sang the Pretty Bride song. I sang it to my bestest friends named Lucille and that Grace. Here comes the bride, all dressed in wide. Her name is Clyde and she reads the TV guide. That Grace looked admiring at me. Wow, I never even knew that song had words, she said. Of course it has words, silly. Every song has words, I said. All you have to do is make them up. After that, I skipped all around those two and I sang the song some more. Guess why I'm singing this bride song, I asked. Guess, people, guess, guess, guess. I couldn't wait for them to guess. Because I'm going to be, I'm going to my first wedding ever on account of my Aunt Flo is getting married, that's why. Lucille clapped her hands real delighted. <gasps> a wedding, a wedding. I love weddings, Junie B. Are you going to be the flower girl? Are you? Are you? I wrinkled my eyebrows. The what? I asked. The who? The flower girl, the flower girl, said Lucille. The flower girl is the very first person to walk down the aisle at the wedding. She gets to carry a, bas a flower basket and she throws beauteous flower petals all over the floor. It's really fun too, Junie B. Oh, there they are. Looks like Lucille is explaining the, being the flower girl and Junie B. Jones is kind of like, what are you talking about? And that Grace is listening. I wonder what she's going to say. It's really fun too, Junie B, said Grace. I was the flower girl at my Aunt Lola's wedding and I got to wear a long satin dress and I only tripped two times. Lucille fluffed her fluffy hair. Yes, well, I've been the flower girl in three weddings, Grace, she said, and I've worn three long satin dresses, and all of them had matching purses and shoes and hats, plus one of them had a blue fake bunny fur cape, and I never tripped at all, so that makes me the bestest flower girl, probably. Grace's face drooped a teeny bit. Oh, she said, kind of soft. After that, Lucille asked me a million questions. What kind of flower girl dress are you going to wear, Junie B, huh? Is it going to be long or short? What color will it be, do you think? So far, I have worn yellow and pink and blue. She tapped her chin. Hmm, I wonder what kind of flower petals you will carry in your flower basket. Tell your Aunt Flo that I prefer rose petals. All of a sudden, Lucille did a gasp. <gasps> Junie B, Junie B, I just thought of something. Maybe Grace and I can teach you. We can teach you how to walk down the aisle and carry the basket. Want us to, huh? Want us to teach you? I jumped up and down. Yes, I said, of course I want you to, Lucille. After that, Grace cheered me up very much. Then all of us did a high five and we skipped in a happy circle and we practiced being flower girls. Okay, chapter five is called Bow. <gasps> so let's see what's gonna happen. I skipped home from my bus stop very thrilled because I had good news, of course. My grandpa Miller was babysitting Ollie. They were playing on the floor together. I run and jumped on the couch. Grandpa Miller, hey, Grandpa Miller, listen to my good news. I'm going to be the flower girl at Aunt Flo's wedding. And so what do you think of that, sir? Grandpa Miller stopped playing with Ollie. He looked at me kind of funny. What? He said. Are you sure about that, toots? Sure, I'm sure. Of course I'm sure, I said, because me and my friends decided it at school today, and now all we need to do is tell Ann Flo. 
I zoomed to the kitchen and got my mother's address book. Then I zoomed right back to my grandpa. So before we used to have cell phones, um, there were there was another type of a phone called a landline, and it didn't have any, it wasn't like um, a computer on the inside, it was just a phone. All you could do was call people. So it didn't have any numbers saved in it. Now if you want to call someone like on my cell phone, I can just pull up their name and call them right away. But it, you used to have an address book where you would write down people's phone numbers. So she went to just go get the book with all the phone numbers in it. Then I zoomed right back to my grandpa. Here, Grandpa Miller, tell me Aunt Flo's phone number. I need to call her this very minute. Grandpa Miller scratched his head. Gee, honey, I don't know, he said. This doesn't sound like a good idea to me. What if Aunt Flo has already made arrangements for a flower girl? I laughed out loud at that silly man. <laughs> yeah, only how could she already make arrangements for a flower girl when she doesn't even know it's me yet? Grandpa Miller covered his face with his hands. He did a groan back there, I think. I pulled on his sleeve. Come on, Grandpa, look up the number. Please, 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 I begged. Finally, Grandpa shaked his head no. You really need to dis wait and discuss this with your mother, he said. <sighs> I did a huffy breath at that guy. Because mother would not be home for an hour, probably. And who could wait that long? That's how come I quick hided the address book under my arm, and I tippy-toed down the hall to mother's room. Then I closed her door very secret, and I climbed up on her bed. After that, I opened up the address book to the page with the M's. Because Aunt Flo's last name is Miller, just like my grandpa's. And what do you know? I spied it right away. F-L-O! I spelled real thrilled. F-L-O spells Flo! And here's another good thing. Aunt Flo's phone number was right next to her name. <gasps> Hey, this project was easy as cake, I said. After that, I dialed the number speedy quick. It ringed and ringed. Hello, said a voice. I did a gasp. <gasps> hey, what do you know? I did it, Aunt Flo. I called you right on the telephone. Aunt Flo's voice sounded curious. Junie B, she said. Is that you? Yes, yes, it's me, Aunt Flo. It's Junie B. Jones, and I've got the best surprise you ever heard of. Then all of a sudden, the surprise popped right out of my mouth. I'm going to be the flower girl at your wedding, Aunt Flo, and so this is your lucky day, madam. I ran all over the bed. Wait till you see me, Aunt Flo. I will be the bestest flower girl you ever saw. Oh my gosh, look at her. And her crazy hair. And her sock feet. And her phone. Oh my goodness. I will be the bestest flower girl you ever saw, because Lucille already showed me how to throw flower petals, and Grace showed me how to not trip. I kept on talking, very excited. Mother thinks I'm a baby, Aunt Flo, but I'm not. I'm a grown-up lady. Wait till you see me. Just wait till you see me. Aunt Flo didn't say any words. I tapped on the receiver with my fingers. Aunt Flo! Aunt Flo! Where did you go? Finally, she talked again. Uh, yes, well, I'm here, Junie B., she said. It's just that your news sort of caught me off guard. I bounced on the bed some more. Hooray! I said, hooray for off guard, right, Aunt Flo? Because off guard is like a big surprise, right? And so what kind of dress would you like me to wear? I think it should be long, all the way to the floor. I grinned real big. And guess what else? Maybe I will also wear a blue fake bunny fur cape. Aunt Flo didn't talk again. I looked into the phone with my eyeball. Hmm, we must have got a bad connector here, I said. Junie B, honey, said Aunt Flo, I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. Just then, I felt sickish in my stomach because bad news is not that good usually. My voice got quieter. What kind, Aunt Flo? I asked very nervous. What kind of bad news? Oh dear, I don't really know how to tell you this, Junie B, but, well, Joe and I have already chosen a flower girl for the wedding, honey, and I'm afraid it's not you. I did a gulp. Oh. Who are you afraid it is? I asked, even quieter. It's Bo, said Aunt Flo. Bo? 
Bo is Joe's little sister, said Aunt Flo. Joe? Joe is the man I'm marrying, said Aunt Flo. Joe asked Bo. Oh, I whispered. Just then, my eyes got tears in them. I gotta go, I said. After that, my nose started to run very much, and I hanged up the phone. Poor Judy B. How sad. It's so hard when you get your hopes up about something, and then they just get kind of, like, squashed. Oh, my goodness. And it probably wasn't a really good idea for her to, to just decide that she was going to be the flower girl. But when you really don't know how those kinds of things work, it's, it's hard not to get excited, excited about things. Chapter six is called The Alternate. Oh, there we go. Um, and I'm wondering what's going to happen. I'm wondering what Mother is going to say when she finds out that Junie B. Jones called Aunt Flo. Oh, my goodness. I'm wondering, you know, what's going to happen. How, what, you, what is she going to tell Grace and Lucille when she goes to school? There's just so many things to think. If you can think of a prediction or maybe something that's going to happen, let me know. Um, and we'll see if you're right. Okay, bye guys. Love you.